My ex-classmate, she got two sons, and then one son is uh, gay, mm. the other one is straight. Mm. So he always thought, not so happy with the gay one. Mm. Uh, she don't feel good. She say, why are people so angry? I'm the one who gave birth, why do they feel the pain? There's a larger family group chat and there was a member of the family who shared something. I have learned the power of just saying to people that, hey, I'm gay. And so all I said to the group chat was, hi, just so you know, you're talking about me. Just so you know, you are looking to criminalize my sex life. and decriminalize sex between men. I believe this is the right thing to do and something that most Singaporeans will now accept. It would be unwise to ignore the risk and do nothing. Most people accept that a person's sexual orientation and behavior is a private and personal matter and that sex between men should not be a criminal offence. I was 17 years old then and I had a very huge argument with one of my ex-partners, you know, and I thought that, you know, instead of having all these arguments with him, I thought that I should open up to my mom and tell her about it. So the first thing I did was I sent her an SMS, because last time no one said, you know. Yeah, so we just used SMS and I and I dropped her a text. I said, Mom, I have to tell you something. Um, I think that I am gay. And you know, Honestly, when I sent it to her, I was so, so scared. I was so scared because, you know, this is, this is it. You know, this is the time when your mom will actually... Um, whether, it will be the point whether she supports you or she doesn't support you, right? What do you feel when you receive that message from me? No, I just asked you to come back home. Yeah, and do you feel like you were upset or angry? No, I'm not angry at all. It's his life. Huh? So I went home. And the first thing she did was she put her hands on my shoulder and she said, it's okay, it's okay. And then she asked me, uh, what do you feel like eating for dinner? You know, I'm going to cook you dinner. I really struggled to find my identity as Malay as well as being gay because it's like it's you cannot have both identities together, you know, because that's what I was I was growing up because I was told that you will be condemned. My parents told me you you'll be on curfew, you have to return home early, you have to tell me who your friends are, and we have to like go through um, religious counseling because it felt that um, this is just a phase for you and you will get married because uh, I do not want a gay son. I think it was very quiet on a Sunday mm. and you said to her, uh, Mak, tahu tak yang Khalid dengan Khalid 
dalam hubungan sejenis. That means in a same-sex relationship. Then she paused. Then I was reading her face, trying to see, be conflicted or angry. But she, her words are so simple. In this, what she said, Mak tahu dan mak faham. I feel at ease after yeah. she's saying that. I pass out a couple of times. Then they have to resuscitate me. And then when the paramedic reached to the hospital, they have to pass to the emergency nurse, right? There was a big commotion. At the same time, I was like screaming, pain, pain, pain. Then suddenly I overheard, they say, can you call the other, the, the, the wife to come in? Huh? Wife? Who's wife? Then I was like screaming, wife? I know wife. <laughs> when I had to make the hard decision when you had a heart attack, I wasn't sure what I'm supposed to do, but I know I need to tell your family. I told your brother, I will take the step back so that um, any family decision right, is for you guys to decide. Because I know that as much as uh, we are in a gay relationship, the concern part is I do not want to hijack what is a, f a sibling's responsibility. But your brother, your eldest brother, was amazing. He allowed, he said like, you go ahead, make the decision for him. If there's any concern about what needs to be done, come back to us, we'll help you from there. And I know like from there, I was, <laughs> I was accepted lah. When we talked to Carl's mom about this video, um, she was a bit apprehensive and we know that um, something might ha happen along the way. <laughs> I don't expect my parents to like um, say that um, he's my significant other. I, I don't want to force it onto them. As much as it was my journey to find out my sexuality, is they also uh, they are on their own journey of like finding their own acceptance. For me, it's like, what are the expressions of my queerness? Let's put, let's start there, right? And the expressions of my of my queerness include things like my professional life, given that I'm a drag queen, which they are supportive of in the in the abstract, as in you know they don't disapprove of it and they're not ashamed of it, and they talk about it with me and with their friends. Um, and then in the more direct sort of way, like you know they've been to the show, they uh, have brought friends to the shows. Good people who work here at Hard Rock Cafe who put up with our bullshit. Give us a space to create a little bit of queer magic. You have to be nice to the people who give you space. So a few things have happened since we shot an interview with, with my parents. First of all, my father had a massive stroke in his sleep and is still in hospital right now. Obviously, this is quite stressful for everybody concerned, myself included, um, but more for my mom than uh, possibly anybody else in the family. And so I think we started to become a little bit less comfortable as a family about them being included in the, in, in the video. Because in a way, I don't think we're set up as a family to deal with a potential backlash at this time. I'm aware that when we say that, it sounds vaguely paranoid. I'm not so sure if we were that paranoid. Um, one need only look at the comments section on any news story about 
the announcement of the repeal of 377A or the, in or the intended repeal of 377A. It hasn't even happened yet. And those fears are quite well-founded. Let's just say that there is, a, there is a particular vitriol, and I would say it's a particular vitriol from a faction of society that claims to be interested in family. I think it's obviously a big deal that we want to address 377A. We can finally come to some agreement that it just should not be there anymore. I will note that gay people and gay Singaporeans and the lives of gay Singaporeans are spoken about in opposition to families and Singaporeans having families. As if, as gay Singaporeans, we don't have families. That's the part of it that strikes me the most. Once again, gay Singaporeans are not people with families as far as we're concerned. You know, in the past, because my father would be like, yeah, you know, it's like, you, like, I go to your show and then you introduce me and then everybody clap and it's like, it's a good time, lah. And I was like, yeah, it, but you, you should also understand that part of the reason that that's happening is that, you know, unfortunately, it's just not that common. Or unfortunately, it's not ubiquitous that a gay person might have a parent that knows they're queer and is proud to be associated with that. I would say um, I'm very lucky to like, put that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ha <laughs> ha